Hi, in this lesson you'll learn about object creation and storage, also known as instantiation. In previous lessons, you've learned that classes can act as the blueprint in Factory for creating objects, which are custom data structures that you can use throughout the rest of your program. For example, you can use the Rectangle class to create individual rectangle objects, each one receiving methods and attribute values. Let's now take a closer look at how this whole process works. Sticking with the Rectangle class, let's create a new rectangle object in the main method. To do this, you'll write rectangle rect1 equals new rectangle parentheses 4 comma 7. You've seen similar syntax in previous lessons when creating scanner objects, but let's talk about each piece here. This is the standard format for creating a new object by calling what's known as the object constructor. Just as you needed to list a data type when declaring primitive or string variables, you also need to declare the object data type. In this case, because you want to create a rectangle with the rectangle class, you need to declare that this variable is going to be of the type rectangle. Rect1 is the object variable name. Whenever you refer to this object in the future, you will use the name that you've assigned to it. This is the same as with primitive values. Unlike primitive values, in order to create an object, you must use the new operator to instantiate a new class object. Object instantiation is the process of creating an instance of the class, which allocates memory for a new object and references that object in memory. This is the same as what you've seen in previous lessons, where a location in memory, in this case at 0x006, is allocated for the new object, and then the object variable at 0x001 references that location. The new operator allows you to create a new object by making a call to what is known as the rectangle class's constructor. The call to the constructor contains two components, the constructor name, which must be the same as the class name, and the arguments. Arguments are the actual values that are being sent into the constructor in order to give this new object unique attribute values. So what exactly is a constructor? A constructor is a special element in a class that initializes an object when it's called. It assigns initial values to the object's attributes and doesn't have a return type, not even void. You can think of a constructor as the actual factory in a class that produces the objects. Up to this point, you've known that a class can contain both attributes and methods, and that it can create objects with those similar elements. Now let's expand what you know about a class to include the constructor. Here you can see the constructor as part of the class, and more accurately, that it will be the element that actually creates the object. In the case of our rectangle class, it now looks like this. If you create a new rectangle object using the new keyword and constructor, the rectangle class constructor will create your rectangle object. Let's take a look at the actual implementation of the rectangle class so that you can see how the constructor fits in and how it is set up. Here is a simple example of a rectangle class. There is a lot going on at the moment, so let's take it piece by piece. At the top, you can see the name of the class, in this case rectangle. All the code inside these top and bottom curly braces is part of the class definition. One thing to note, we often choose to have the starting curly braces on their own lines in the activities, like this, but sometimes on slides when we have a lot of code to display, we'll bring the top brace up to the header line so that the code doesn't get too small to read. Both styles are perfectly acceptable to use and function the same way. Just wanted to mention this since you may see both styles as you continue to learn Java. Okay, back to the rectangle class. At the top of the class is where you normally define your attributes. In this case, you have width and height. They are normal integer variables, but include the private keyword so that they can only be used within the class. These particular attribute variables are known as instance variables, because they will hold attribute and characteristic values unique to each instance or object of the class. The bottom four blocks of code are the methods in the class. Again, these are called instance methods because they can only be accessed via the objects created. More on these in a later lesson. Just know they function similarly to class methods, but are designated as public so that the objects can access and use them. And finally, the constructor. The constructor is the object factory of the class. It is called every time a new rectangle object is created in another class. It is where the attributes, in this case width and height, receive their unique set of values. Let's take a closer look at its signature. 